and uh, it's going to be a little different here tonight, I think. Uh, number one, we do have a letter from the uh, uh, applicant's uh, attorney asking for concurrent hearings. And basically, we have two hearings tonight, but both of them are on the same property. And uh, one is asking to subdivide the lot, and one is asking not to subdivide the lot. Uh, and so we will hear them both and then we're going to vote on the first uh, request and then we will vote on the second request tonight on that but we will hear them both together and I will read the ads for both of them right now too uh, the zoning board of appeals will hold a public hearing in the selectmen's meeting room at the town hall 16 Lowell Street Reading Massachusetts on Thursday, August 7th, 2014, at 7 p.m. On the petition of Arch Land Development, who seeks a variance from zoning bylaws, Town of Reading, under sections 5.0 and 5.1.2 of the zoning bylaws, in order to create two non-conforming lots in an S-20 district on the property located at 163, 167 South Street in Reading, Massachusetts. And I will go ahead and read the legal notice for the second, or uh, you might say the second part of the case. Uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Selectman's Meeting Room at the Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, on Thursday, August 7, 2014, at 7 p.m. on the petition of Arch Land Development, who seeks a variance and special permit under sections 4.0, 4.22, 5.1, and 6.3.8 of the zoning bylaws in order to demolish an existing four unit structure and to construct a new four unit townhouse structure on a lot located in an S-20 district on the property located at 163, 167 South Street, Reading, Massachusetts. Unless there is an objection, I will dispense with the reading of the abutters list, except to say that all the abutters were notified, as were the following. Board of Selectmen, Police Department, Building Department, Health Department, Engineering Division, Town Clerk, Fire Department, Conservation Commission, Assessors Department, CPDC, members and associate members of the Board of Appeals, as well as the planning boards of Wakefield, Linfield, North Reading, Stoneham, Woburn, and Wilmington. Testimony given before this board tonight is taken under oath. So if you think you may want to speak tonight, please stand and raise your right hand. This includes anybody in the public that may want to comment later on tonight. Uh, it doesn't hurt if you uh, take the oath and you don't speak. So feel free to stand up and take the oath, and if you don't, you don't. Uh, I swear that the testimony given by me before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Responses, I do. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Latham, would you care to uh, start off here? And, uh, uh, I did have a second request in the letter I sent you today, and that is to ask if you would actually hear the portion of the testimony dealing with the history of this property, make a finding as to whether or not this constitutes <coughs> a non-conforming lawful for family. Well, because obviously everything is predicated upon that fact. We have evidence we'd like to introduce on that that's relatively clear, and that would give us guidance as to what next do uh, after you make that determination. So that was my second request. Right. Could I make a point of order, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Does that mean you want to take the cases out of order, argue 1414 first and then argue 1413? Because it appears that your 1413 is asking for relief in the alternative. Actually, they both, I think, are predicated by way of uh, argument on it having been a four family. Fair enough. Sorry. That's all right. So with me this evening is Bill Johnson, his wife. You see me right here. Right here. It's the applicant, uh, and I'd like to start off, if I could, indicating that Bill has uh, done uh, development in town before. Uh, he's appeared before you before. He did 10 Pierce Street, 
uh, which she took an old uh, dilapidated property and put it over a attractive multi-family uh, building. Uh, and so he, he's uh, familiar with the town, hate the town seem to be a king. The property that's in question here is 63, 163, 165, 167 South Street. It's in the S20 district. It's at the corner of the S15 district. Across the street is S15. The lot itself is 19,500 square feet. Uh, there is a small easement at the, uh, at the back of the property that does not affect what we're uh, asking for this evening or the future use of the property. Uh, the, uh, this property is our position as grandfathered, at least as far as the four family use that's currently going on there. Uh, I'd like to point out also, which you probably saw if you go by there, the building is actually within a foot or so of the front lot line. Uh, the roadway layout goes farther than the grass. So, it's very close to, to the front of the property itself. Uh, and uh, basically, we're starting off talking about uh, non conformity and the sections allowing for special permits. Uh, I think of section 6.3, uh, which is really a savings section that's consistent with the state statute that says that if property existed, was used before the creation of the zoning uh, provision that prohibits it, then it's continued as a grandfathered right and grandfathered property. Uh, and that is the case here. So our, our date in Reading is 1942, which is the first year when the town had a comprehensive of zoning Bible. So we're going to provide you with evidence, we hope you find satisfactory, uh, that this property did exist, which uses a four family at that time, and has continued to be used since that time as a four family building. I'd like to submit to support that proposition some of the Reading street listings. We went 41, 42, around that period of time to show you that there were four different families uh, at those street numbers, 163, 165, 167. I put in brackets the left-hand side just for, just for convenience purposes. And this is, of course, it's hard to establish what happened that long ago, but, but this is usually considered to be good evidence uh, for that proposition. We also have, in addition, copies of what are available as the assessor's old records. They don't have them all. Um, but Bill actually did most of his background work and has a pretty good collection of the assessor's field cards. And all of these, uh, going back to as far as they have them, reflect the fact that it's been, uh, been used in the uh, judgment of the assessors as a four family. It's just four to eight. That's, the, that's what's the category, but it, it's, it's four. And I've circled on those the relevant portion just to show that in the assessor's mindset, this has been used as a poor family building for a good period of time as well. It's, uh, I, I heard the question about what the building inspector left the memo. I've had conversation with the building inspector. Um, the property owner has, uh, and Mr. Mr. Johnson has. He invited the building inspector out to actually walk through the property. There's also an inspection he did in 2005. Uh, and in essence, uh, his determination was that this was a four-family dwelling and had been so used for a long time. You, know, you have enough experience in dealing with him to know that if he sees something like a new sink or something he's suspicious of, he's the first one to raise it. Uh, he did not have that uh, concern when I spoke with him in any event. I'd like to also, for the best evidence possible, is to ask, ask uh, Ted Watson if he'd be good enough. Ted is the property owner. He's lived in that neighborhood for a long time. Uh, he's going to tell you some facts. Uh, he's under oath to tell you some facts that relate to his family, his knowledge of the site to further corroborate the history of four family use, so wherever that is. Could you stand up and be good enough just to tell the board the things you had mentioned earlier? Uh, my mother lived there, uh, moved in about 1943. We were all in the service then. So uh, we came home, and Mrs. DeMarkey, who owned the property, there was four families there then, and uh, she asked us if we would purchase the property from her, which we did. And uh, we've owned it ever since. It was a four family then, and it's still a four family. So 
So uh, as a, uh, I was looking at the outhouse, it's still there, and there was one, uh, Mansfield lived there, and Rex Mansfield had his name on the inside wall of the outhouse. Uh, he had a date of uh, 1933, so uh, it was still a four family then, back that long. Thank you. Any questions? Do you have questions of uh, first hand knowledge? Thank you. That really is the crux of our presentation with reference to the history and use of this property, uh, as being a poor family. And our hope was that you'd find that sufficient, whether you want to hear from others first, but uh, you'd find that sufficient uh, to make a determination uh, finding this as being a poor family. They say that affects where you go from here on the action. So uh, you would like us to uh, make a finding right now yes, in regards to the aspect of it as being a uh, legal, non-conforming, four-family apartment house. Yes. And the reason I say apartment is because that's what the designation is in writing. It's an apartment. I yes. it. Okay. Uh, David, uh, would you like to comment on that before we... Uh, and put this up, and, and we will have a period here. We're just voting now, or we, we're going to make a finding, possibly going to vote on a finding, whether this is a four-family unit or not a four-family unit, legal four-family unit right now. And that's all we're doing, not voting on regards to uh, putting in townhouses or putting in single-family houses or anything <coughs> like that right now. My name is Joan Benavides. I live at it, 164. Is this a public I couldn't com understand something he said. Okay. At the very beginning, you said something about something across the street. I didn't catch it. Oh, I said that across the street, the S15 zone district. The what? The, uh, the town zone, a different town oh. zone. A different town zone is across S15. the street. Oh. <laughs> the S15 okay. zone is across the street as opposed to the side of the street we're talking is an S20 zone. Thank you. Uh, David, uh, any questions? Uh, uh, yeah, I guess I have. Uh, well, if we're being asked to, to make a preliminary ruling, yeah. I'll keep my questions, I guess, brief as it relates to the proposal that's been submitted up right. to this Right, I think we should. And yes. so uh, my first question is, is you've submitted a, a copy of the, the property card. Is, is it your argument that the property card is determinative of the zoning designation in that zone? No, it, it's simply what the assessors felt in their mind it was being used for, and knowing that assessors go to property occasionally to, uh, to reappraise it and what they see. No, uh, that, that was the only context. Okay. Uh, that's the only question I have for now. Okay. John? <coughs> the... Um, Property cards, in my mind, is just what the assessor's office sees and therefore taxes. It's got no relation to zoning. We've gone through that time and time again. Right. But um, you provided the uh, street list here, and um, I see, well, what I think I see is three units. Um, the town only, if you go back to the assessor's cards again, they only list presently 163 and 165. 167 does not exist. However, when I go back and look at the street listing, I see 163, 165, and 167. And um, what appears to be um, three different families living in those three units. I don't see a fourth one designated there in, in any particular way. I do see a, um, an additional name on there that, that may or may not appear as um, part of the family. I don't, I don't know that. Uh, but to the point that we're trying to make, was it a legal for family? I, to me, what's been presented thus far doesn't verify that it is a for family. I concur that it would be a legitimate non-conforming three family consistent with this and when I read some of the property cards there are some designations about 
what that fourth unit might be, the, the very small unit. Um, and if I logically try to go back and recapture that with what the town did back in the early 1900s or whatever when they were giving out street addresses, which they, they do all the time, they give a number to the unit that's there. Um, my guess would be that when this was first created, I mean, when you look at the structure, you can see that it was added on to at least twice. So what it looks like was there was um, three units, and the town gave out 165 in 1942. It gave out 163, 165, and 167. So to me, I'm looking for additional verification that there is a fourth unit there, and I don't, I don't really see that at the present time. Or maybe I'm missing something, and maybe I'm reaching too far, Brad. But I, I don't see that at this, the present time. Absolutely. Uh, I, I have to respectfully disagree that every time there's a unit, there's a different street number. Um, there are houses in the town. No, I didn't. I didn't say that. I said oh, I, I in 1942 when they gave out the numbers, because they had to number the units on the streets, it appears that there were three numbers given out to that address, three, five, and seven. Usually what they did is they would look at the length of frontage and then assign street number based on that. You get numbers for empty lots that was going to be built upon as opposed to necessarily the units, which is my understanding of the way that was done. In looking here, I'm just looking at 1941. That's what I'm looking uh, at. The names are Thompson, Reed, DeMarchi, Merrill, uh, Schiaffino, uh, at those addresses. Mm -hmm. uh, in 1942, yep. Thompson, Reed, DeMarchi, Schiaffino, and Merrill. Uh, I can't tell you what portion they lived in, because we, we only can yep. have the evidence we have. And you uh, don't know the relationship between the different parties no, there either. You're right. That makes it difficult because there could be uh, marriages and whatever going on there. It you don't be know a, that. an old father. A, a yes. Father. Absolutely. But uh, also if you look at uh, uh, 1943, they have a vacancy, but they, they have also Dean, DeMarchi, Serpino, and Merrill plus a vacancy. That seems to be indicative of, um, with all of those different surnames, of more than just three units. But you can do more than just infer from that. You have the under oath testimony from Mr. Watson. Can't get much better testimony than someone who, whose mother lived there, who saw it, who's owned it for these many years. So I guess that's what I have to supplement up with that. Okay. That's what I have to Okay. Uh, Sally, any uh, questions or inquiries? I would tend to agree with John in the sense that it's not crystal clear uh, in the in the documentation as to what existed, other than we know it was a multi-family uh, structure. Uh, but I do understand the historian here who came to, so uh, I can't add to what's been said already. Okay, Eric. An email from Glenn on this. I would say maybe no, nothing. I thought maybe like a few weeks ago that he that they had the inspection, um, which I know that Brad has included in the materials, and that he remembers it being yes. A and there's there's you have some information in front of you, kind of supporting that. Okay. Because he he has the certificate of inspection. Right. Okay. And he has it down as a full family. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but he didn't give us any letter. Okay. But he. He did find that in okay. the files, and then it's right. it's been presently it's presently um, presently used. It hasn't lapsed or anything like that. For uh, it's been continuously occupied, I guess, for the last what is it two years? I think it's not. There's been no abandonment. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I guess if, if Glenn is found. Uh, from him, his perspective, that's a fourth family, and we have testimony here. I mean, seems good enough for me. Yeah. Uh, looking at it, uh, 
I, I can see John's point of view. Again, what we're looking at is just addresses, though. We're not looking at, know. you know, what was in the unit. Looking back at assessor's cards, they have noted in the past history that it is four units. Looking at Glenn's certificate, I, I kind of was hoping Glenn would be here tonight to maybe uh, respond to some of it, but obviously he isn't. But he has inspected it, and it's a four unit. Uh, we heard testimony that was sworn, you know, sworn testimony that it was four units. Uh, even if it wasn't a four unit, say in 1941, uh, pre-zoning, it has not been enforced as not a four unit, and I think within the last 10 years, so it would be, I think, acceptable now, no? Not as far as use goes. Not as far Dimensional as use. Dimensional controls, okay. but not as far as use. And but I, it, it, it appears to me the evidence, uh, you know, to my way of thinking, and just a, a, you know, the polling sheets here or the, the, the census sheets, it, it indicates what I've seen in the assessors' things and what, what uh, testimony has given that it, that it has been used as a four family uh, past history. Now, how far that goes back, I don't know, but I would tend to think it's, uh, it's been used legally as a four family. Mm -hmm. And, uh, to my, to my thinking, I would consider it a legal non-conforming use as a four-family unit there. And I think if it continued now, if nothing was done over the next few years, say, on it, four families would still be living there over the next few years. Uh, I, I think it's considered a four-family by the town. Well, on his certificate of inspection, mm -hmm. it was done in May of 2005. It expires in 2010. Okay. There's been no such inspection since 2010 and to date. I can explain that. Um, mm -hmm. Due to a personnel change and a lot of confusion, uh, inspections were not being done in the manner in which they should have been being done. Yep. So that's why it went well, by the roadside. I guess the point I was getting to, and this is further down the road, this is not for now. Yeah. Um, the certificate of inspection is basically saying from Glenn that number, the number of units being used and also the condition of the number of units being used. That was done in 2005, mm -hmm. yet as we move along, the uh, but just evaluation by another firm outside says the, uh, the unit is not really safely habitable. Um, so, I mean, I'll get into that when we get to that point, but right now... Just just by the very nature that he went out to do that inspection, that's only done for four families and up. Yeah, but that's nine years ago. Yes. Yeah, 2005. Yes, he has not been in yeah, nine right. years. Right, and it, as you say, expired 2010. I think Maureen explained... Uh, I know. Yeah. yeah. I understand. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to... Uh, you know, I don't think I have to open it up to public hearing now just for a finding Andy. on this. Uh, well, if someone, had, if someone had um, some information you would that suggest, they wanted. You would yeah. suggest. Okay. Uh, you would too? Yeah. I would think we should, if we're being asked to rule that it would be sure. nice to. Okay. I, I am going to open it up now for, a, uh, for any public comments. And if you could please just limit your comments to what you may, may not know in regards to the use of the property as a uh, four-unit apartment uh, structure. Uh, is there anybody who would like to comment on that? Yes. Uh, I have here the documents from the Lake Apartment and also the assessor's office uh, showing that it's a two-family, four-family, uh, four and we uh, I make that out every year, send it to the assessors, and uh, so they uh, have that on their records. And this is the light department, four apartments and one house meetup for the common areas. So I'd like to present that. Okay. Welcome to. <coughs> Thank you. This is Paul Moss. This is made out every year. So the number of apartments. 
first floor, second floor. Okay. That's filed every year. We should be. We would have that for 1942, Mr. Watson. <laughs> no, the only reason I'm asking that is because no. that's. Uh, they, I don't know when they started sending that form right. to us, but uh, and that's supposed to be filed in January every year on uh, commercial property. And, and who's this from? I, I don't. Uh, Board of Assessors. This is from the Board of Assessors in town here. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And the light Those are our light department. Uh, it's five meters. Five meters there. One and as you say, one, uh, for one for each apartment and one for the common area. Yes. Okay. I'll put those in the file. John, would you, anybody like to look at those? Or? Um, I think what might be useful is to go back to the electric department or the uh, uh, Reading Municipal Light. Each meter has a number on it. You could trace back what the meter numbers were right back to 1942. If there were four or five meters there in 1942, you made your case. But this is this is okay. the type of thing that you know the board can't go out and do. It relies on the applicant to provide that information. Okay, if uh, there's no further public comments, I'm going to close the uh, public portion of just this po of this section of the meeting. And uh, I don't know if there's any more evidence anybody would like or uh, uh, ready to uh, make a motion for a finding. I would uh, go ahead and uh, accept that. I don't think I need any more. Okay, Eric's going to make a motion. Uh, in the matter of the petition of Archland Development seeks relief on their petition of the Zoning Board, Board of Appeals case 14-13 and 14-14, I move that the board make a finding that the property constitutes a lawful non-conforming for family use and structure. Do I hear a second? Second. A second. Any further comment? Okay. Can we take a vote on that uh, in regards to a motion for a finding that we have a, uh, a legal nonconforming use, the property at 163, 167 South Street uh, as a uh, four-unit apartment house, uh, four apartment, uh, four-unit apartment structure. Is that how, you, that how we, you caption the motion? I had it as a uh, four-family use and structure, which was the four-family. Yeah, which is the use. relief that you know have okay. you know, branded style. That's fine. You yep. prefer something else, so. Mm-hmm. Four-family use and structure. Uh, are we ready for a vote on this? I would. I would prefer to get more information. Um, I. <clears throat> I'd like to chase down the meters, but I, I'm not going to chase down the meters. No, and I'm not going to, and uh, I don't think anybody here is, and uh, I seen what the evidence presented tonight, <coughs> the testimony, what's been, what's on record at town hall. I'm comfortable with considering it as a legal, non-conforming, four-family structure. Okay. Uh, I have enough information. I don't need any. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, raise your hand. All those opposed? Okay. We've made a finding that it is a legal non-conforming four-family structure. Uh, would you like to continue now uh, with your case? As was said, the relief is in the alternative, uh, though the preference is to uh, 
be able to build a new fourth Indian building. Uh, and that's what we uh, primary request. Uh, the Reading bylaw does anticipate uh, certain kinds of uh, certain circumstances where a special permit is warranted. And I look at section 632, um, and that indicates that you can grant a special permit to change and extend a non conforming use, but only if you determine uh, that such change or extension should not be substantially more detrimental than the existing non conforming use to the neighborhood. The following types of changes to non conforming uses may be considered by the board modification or extension of the existing non conforming use. So that's the category of use, not the structure. Um, in this case, the four family use would really continue, recognizing that it's in a different building and would be of, of a greater footprint. Um, so there, there's, there's clearly a change, but still underlying use is still four family. So our request there is that uh, to the extent you look at the issue as a detrimental to the neighborhood, uh, would be to compare what we have, uh, which is a building on the street, uh, older building, uh, with a replacement building that would conform to code. And uh, Glenn had commented, I guess you haven't seen it, but he commented uh, regarding health safety issues. That there's much that can be done because it's grandfathered, uh, but he would like very much to see a change take place because of his concern uh, with the interior of the property, the all cut kind of apartments and so forth. Um, so, consistent with that, uh, and also the fact that because this is categorized as an apartment, uh, this applicant, if they prevail with you, if you give relief, they have to get the CPDC for site plan review. And so we know that they look at uh, architectural issues, features, landscaping, screening, all those kinds of issues are going to be scrutinized uh, along the way, which I think as a consequence would, would be assured, it would not be substantially detrimental uh, to the neighborhood. The second category to look at is 638. 638 uh, deals with the voluntary demolition. You've dealt with this, I know, a lot. Uh, voluntary demolition of a building and providing a new building. Uh, it says any new construction following voluntary demolition of a non conforming structure should be in compliance with the zone and bylaw except in the following circumstances. Sub A deals with single family, two family. We're not asking for relief under A, we're asking for relief under B that in the event you're looking to demolish and reconstruct, um, if the structure exceeds the volume, which it does, of the existing circumstance, um, then you will look to make sure, uh, you may allow such reconstruction as determine the proposed reconstruction will not be substantially more detrimental than the existing non-conforming structure to the neighborhood. Uh, so again, that's that same question of whether what's being proposed will be more, substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood uh, than what is there now, and we respectfully submit it would not, especially with uh, fine tuning and other things that can take place. Um, and uh, so, with, with that in mind, uh, our request would be that those two sections of a, an existing non conforming structure and an existing non conforming use, uh, that the standard is, isn't substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood, we respectfully submit that it is not. Um, and it, it, for the reasons stated. Uh, if there are questions of scale, architecture, any of those kind of aesthetic issues, then we would be more than happy to address them, take whatever comments you have, um, and entertain conditions that may be imposed in preference to that particular issue. So that's, that's basically the, uh, the essence of our special permit case with reference to a replacement building under those sections of the Bible. And of course you have the plans. Um, and I think the rest of this that we have really relates to the variance issue, which um, uh, our hope would be that if you're willing to allow the public to speak as to the substantial detriment issue, we could then go and not go forward with the variance argument. I'll leave that up to you right now. Okay. So, so what, you, what I'm getting, it seems like, I'm just going looking at the chronological order of these graphs. Uh, you basically want to go with the case 1414 first, which is the request of the Four unit townhouse. Yes. Okay. And we will discuss that first and then uh, we'll go from there. Thank you. Uh, thank you. David, any comments on that request? I guess I, yeah, I have, I have a couple of uh, questions. Um, I'd ask the applicant to try to demonstrate how 
a four family use in an S20 district is not more substantially more detrimental to that zoning district. If we were going from a single family use to a four family use, I've got to agree. But since we already have a permissible four family use there, it's going from A to A. It's going from a four family use to a four family use. The difference is, of course, one of scale. And we acknowledge that. Dimensional controls, et cetera. I'm sorry? Dimensions of the new structure, et cetera. Yes, uh, that's it's marked on the plan that we submitted. So we, we do acknowledge it's larger. Um, and you can talk to the footprint if you want to talk to the footprint issues. Uh, but our belief is that it is not unattractive, and we'll get through with CPDC, it'll be even more beautiful, I think, as a consequence of their input uh, to that issue. Uh, but since it is going from a four family to a four family, we don't see how the kind of use change would be detrimental. Speak, if you would, to the difference between its use as a four family dwelling as opposed to four condominium dwelling, which are four separate uses for value. Sure, I, I think that um, the simple, one, one simple comment is the occupants may be different. Um, you're going to probably have homeowners, which is a condominium concept. Uh, depending what one's philosophy is, would you think homeownership uh, leads to better care for one's own property? Uh, in that sense, it's a positive change. If you say, well, these small uh, type of units uh, provide a need for certain people in the town, then of course that, that may be considered to be a negative change. Uh, the change also be the tax base would be enhanced as a consequence of this. Uh, but I, I don't think there's much beyond that from a townhouse condominium. I mean, the zoning considers them neutral. Whether it's a condominium or apartment, it's the same thing under the zoning bylaw. Um, it, it, I know that. Some members of the uh, board prefer condominiums, and that's frankly what Bill has in mind here. And if, if I could, if there's any, anything further to do on that. No, I, I guess so. So, given that there are admittedly some, maybe uh, there will be some additional non conformities to this legal non conforming use? There, there'll be no Should the relief be granted? Sorry. There, there will, uh, the, the offsets will be conforming. In other words, the yard, all the yard requirements will be met. Uh, the lot won't change in size. It, it basically is going to be about the same. There's a slight variation in the lot line, but uh, beyond that, there's nothing material that's going to change. Is the is the current lot since you brought it up? Is the current lot meet the S20 requirements? No, it's 19,000 some of square feet. Okay, so it's already a non-conforming right. lot as well. It is. That's correct. Have you ever been before this board where this board has been asked to make something that's legal non-conforming more non-conforming? Uh, I'm trying to recall. I I can't think of a particular case. Sorry, for John's uh, spot, I, I, but you know well, I think I've had circumstances where you trade one non-conforming for another, uh, where you determine well this non-conforming is less offensive than another non-conforming. I can't recall a particular street address. And so it's degree of non-conformity you might. Degree of non-conformity, the holistic okay. impact. I think are, are, are certainly worthy of consideration. And the only other comment I'd make is the the standard is not detrimental, but substantially more detrimental. So it's a higher bar. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to look at whether it's negative. Thank you. I don't have anything further this time. John? Uh, we have, may I say something? No. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'm open for public hearing mm -hmm. after we discuss it here at the board, okay? Okay, because it was an incorrect, something incorrect. Okay, just keep your thought and we will open it up for a public hearing. Ah, uh, John. <coughs> Are we looking um, for a special permit under 6.3 as well as the variance for the apartment uh, classification? Well, I, I'm not um, sure what your judgment is on that. We've, we've come forward with asking for whatever relief is deemed appropriate and try to cover the waterfront. We've already got a lot that exists. It's got a four family on it. We saw it, Lennon, his comedy talks about 840, if you were creating a, an apartment in town of one of those districts, you have to have 80,000 square feet or 40,000 square feet. But since it's already a, a poor family on the site, it didn't seem to me that what we're doing changes the lot size requirement. It's just four family to four family. 
Uh, so uh, I wasn't sure if, if you find that relief is warranted under the non-conforming use and non-conforming structure, that I don't see a variance is required. But if you believe it is, you're more than happy to come and respond to it. I think the, uh, the variance is an aspect of it <coughs> is much more difficult Oh, absolutely. In the special permit direction. Um, however, there's a number of issues there also. Um, I see that um, on both proposed um, certified plot plans, um, both in 1414 and 1413, you've uh, added to the property now making it 20,000, uh, 20, I'm sorry, um, 500. 20,500 from yeah. 19,500. Um, the intention there um, is to to make that a conforming lot, I would assume. Bill, I'm going to ask you to respond. I think I'm going to have to ask Ted <laughs> the exact reason why he wanted to change the lot lines. I think it was to create more of a buffer or uh, some of the... Uh, I wanted to bring that... Uh, up to more than 20,000 feet. So I did have the lot lines rearranged with my own property because I had plenty. And, uh, and I also wanted to straighten it out to, uh, it was an, an angle at the uh, street line. So we moved that over. I took some land there and added more than enough to make it uh, 20, 22,000. 22,500 and uh, 46, it looks like. Yeah. I don't know if that's been recorded yet. It hasn't. <coughs> okay, thank you. And the question that I was leading to from there is what is the resulting um, size and frontage of your property at 155 Walnut Street now? Because that's not listed any place in this. So do we have, you have a non, you have a conforming lot to begin with, or you had a conforming lot to begin with, I would assume, that was 20,000 square feet with uh, 120 feet of frontage? 120 feet or is it 150 feet? 120 feet. Feet. Yeah. Yeah. Are you talking about my own lot? Correct. Yeah. 155. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, well, now, I'm not sure of the uh, exact square footage, but uh, somewhere in excess of... May, may I give the numbers? They're, they're from the chart here. Today's lot, his lot is 27,000 square feet, and it's 127.8 foot frontage feet, and this change in lot line actually adds frontage and subtracts only 700 square feet out of 27,000. It will remain a conforming lot. It will remain a conforming lot. That's, that's the question. That's the question. Okay. That was the question. Okay. okay, thank you. Maureen, do you have the information that you need from the speaker? Pardon me? Do you have the information that you need from the speaker? For the names and the addresses? Uh, yes, I know. Okay. okay, all right. Is that a um, For now, yes. Yeah, for now. Okay. Uh, Sai, comments on this? Yeah. Uh, just for clarification, the current status of the property, I understand, I think, to be there. Are, it is fully occupied at this time. Are there four families in that? 163 no, uh, to 167? One, two. Two uh, tenants moved out. And uh, there's a tenant moving out this weekend, I believe. And there will be one left on the second floor at 163 South Street. And uh, 163 has uh, an apartment over the first floor. And that's why it's uh, 163 uh, one first floor and 163 second floor. Still four apartments. Okay. Uh, the other thing, also, just for clarification, is there, I noticed there's a pending sale sign on the on the property. Uh, I assume you're selling. To whom? That would be to Mr. Johnson. Right? You. Yes. Okay. 
And uh, I guess the other thing, the question I would ask is, is what is your current intent as to what to do with this new structure if you're permitted to do this? Um, townhouses, condos, townhouses. whatever. Uh, townhouses, condominiums, and there would be uh, you know, a condominium association. Um, so you know, the property would be kept up. There would be a lot of common area. Uh, there would be parking requirements. Uh, as you can see on the plan, uh, there's parking to the rear. Um, inside the building enclosed where right now it's actually the parking <coughs> right on the street you know um, probably in, within the, in the right of way most of the parking I, I think uh, I think it may be parking to uh, for about six to eight vehicles but I'm not sure they all pretty much park right right there so we would bring the parking to the rear and uh, you know, try to minimize the impact and the surrounding uh, uh, our neighbors you know and that would be a lot of uh, input from uh, CPDC. Uh, it's not obvious to me at this point uh, as to whether a variance would or would not be required if we were to decide to move forward. Uh, I guess the question for me is, is it's a four-family replacing a four-family the issue becomes one of whether it is substantially, in the eyes of the board, more detrimental than what is there now. Aesthetically, it's certainly what I see there now is not very impressive. But this would be, would be, would look better. On the other hand, what you have now to me looks more like something that appearance-wise fits in better than what is coming, what would be coming. So I'm kind of up in the air at the moment. I'd like to hear a little bit more input on it uh, as we go forward with this hearing before I decide which way I, I would vote. And I'll let it go now and save my further comments later. Okay, thank you. Eric, yeah, any comment? Nothing yet. Nothing yet, okay. Uh, well, I reviewed it and I had a number of comments on it. Uh, Number one, let's take a look at the survey plan. I, error, a couple of, well, it isn't, an, I found a error on it, I assume. Uh, in the uh, dimension, in the back of the uh, townhouse units, shows the cut in of one foot, then it goes two feet. I think that should be 20 feet. I don't think it's 26 uh, by one, the cut in of one, and then another two feet back. It scales 20 feet. You see where I'm getting at? You don't. You see the side of your uh, townhouse unit? Yes. See the dimension from the front, 26 feet. See the dimension that goes back to, towards the rear, 26? 26. Then it cuts in a foot. Yes. Then the next dimension is two feet. Yes. Is that correct, two feet? No, it's not. Two feet. Okay. Uh, so you might want to get that corrected. Uh, I do not see a area footprint of the townhouse units on here. Maybe I missed it, but I added them up based on the uh, dimensions and I come up with 4,008 feet for the footprint. Yeah, I think it was just a typo. It was 20 feet. And not okay. Two, not two feet. And yeah, and I think from, it is two. Yeah, from front to back, it's 46. Right. Yeah. I believe you're right. Uh, but the one thing I was looking when I was looking at this was the footprint area. Okay. And it's not there. I added them up, did some calculations, and I came up with 4,008 feet for the building footprint. I don't know, I don't know if agree you with this. Or not. This has all the information, the volume of both existing and, and proposed. Okay, I'm looking at the survey plan. And I would like to see, you know, the footprint would be nice. You have the footprint of the existing structure at 1920, 1,920 feet. So what you're talking is a structure that's more than double what you're putting in there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, I just wanted to, you know, point those out to you. Uh, as I say, it, it, it appears to me that it's a grandfathered use in regards to the 
four-unit apartment. Uh, it's a legal non-conforming use. And, uh, you know, no variance, as far as I could see, would be necessary. It would be, all, it would be a special permit then. Uh, it's a four townhouse. It's uh, more than double the existing structure there, the proposed townhouse unit. Uh, and you're right, the uh, Board of Appeals may grant a special permit to extend a nonconforming use if such, if, uh, such extension is uh, not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. My personal opinion, something that's double, more than double the size, is substantially more detrimental than what's there figuring what's there is a non-conforming use. Even though it's legal, it's a non-conforming use in a residential neighborhood. Uh, I'm trying to keep the mass down as much as we could. Uh, the, the, uh, existing building is 68 feet. Mm -hmm. We really cut it down each unit as narrow as we could, which was 22 feet. So the mass, uh, you know, it's, it's 20 feet wider. Yeah. Um, but, you know, and, and that was probably you know the best design that we could come up with is keeping it narrow and maybe a little bit deeper, but it sure. still uh, would meet all the dimensional uh, requirements. No. Uh, and that's what was our goal to bring it back into conformity, and meet the side, the rear, and the front setbacks, and keep the parking because it is in the uh, uh, what do they call it, the scenic district, right? You know, and it, it, it's very well regulated, so that we right. would get the parking off of the street and we put the parking in the back. So you know we did take a careful look at that and we did try to make it a loop. Better. Yeah. Um, so. No, I understand. Uh, any other uh, thing I wanted to bring up, and uh, you know, I'm looking at the bylaws, and uh, let's see here. If the you're going to adjust the lot lines, there it appears. Okay. Now, I don't know how that works in regards to uh, grandfathered lot, not a lot. We have attorneys on the board here. Uh, but if I read section 5.1.2 of the bylaws correctly, which talks about an apartment unit in an S20 zone requires 100,000 plus square feet of lot area certainly don't have that here when you adjust the lot lines and I'm wondering if that you know when you make that adjustment to the lot lines you don't hold your old lot does that kick in the requirement for a hundred thousand square foot area for uh, an apartment complex uh, yeah I know yeah I know you're looking towards your attorney there and that's who I would be looking to with uh, you know to an attorney to uh, maybe comment on that Brad, do you have a comment on that? Uh, uh, not offhand, maybe. But. Uh, I'd, I'd probably want to have a discussion with Mr. Watson to see whether moving the lot lines that important. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, other than that, and I say everything, as you say, you go through these, you issue a special permit for demolition and reconstruction. You issue a permit uh, for an extension of a nonconforming use. Etc. It is all a lot of it is uh, got two requirements to it that you're doing it, uh, and one of those requirements is the detriment to the neighborhood. And personally, to my way of thinking, something that's twice as large going in in there than what's there now is a major detriment to the neighborhood. Uh, anybody else uh, would like to comment? And I would open that up to a public hearing if uh, anybody else would like to comment before I do that. Um, you know, you, you look at the uh, the architectural plans, mm -hmm. um, and if you look at the front versus the rear of the property, we're talking basically about a, uh, um, a sloping down, so we have, in essence, a uh, two-story two story from the front but a three-story three from the, the back. rear. Right. And the, the slope of the property does not look as if it can um, handle that. So the immediate butter could have water problems from the runoff. And I don't know what, what CB, CPDC right. is going to be looking at, but 
I, I look at the same thing that I didn't want to address that I, at this I agree. point. We, we have no topographic plan to look at in regards to grading of the site. Right. We did do a limited topo, and the, the grade to the uh, rear of the property uh, would be uh, a little bit lower than the uh, cellar floor elevation of the garage grade. So there would be a little cut and a retaining wall installed, and that would be brought up at CPDC. Mm -hmm. And all the drainage would be, have to be contained on site anyhow. That's one of the uh, right. big issues that they bring up. So we couldn't, you know, we would have to meet that requirement. We couldn't have any discharge of water from our site onto any of ours. Right. But the other issue that I had is that from the front, we're looking at something that is 33 feet, 8 inches high, the right job. which is just, just under the 35-foot limit. Uh, uh, in regard... From here to the top to of the, the peak, roof, yes. to the peak of the roof, and if you look at the rest of the neighborhood, um, most of the neighborhood is not that massive in terms of size. So, the question of how do you look at this structure, as you were saying, right? Can I just respond to the height issue? Yes. Um, you, you measure your height on the zoning to the. I know that. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know that, yeah. but I, I'm looking. I, I'm looking at, the, uh, you might say, the curbside visual, um, which um, it's a we don't, yeah, we will really look at because it's not zoning, but in the same stand, in Is the same, right, yeah. because we're looking at the neighborhood as much in the special permit. I mean, the, the other route to go is certainly the variance aspect of it, but there are, the, when I addressed some of the things that I was concerned about, in a special permit, the, the mass of this proposed four, four unit is substantial if you go the special permit route. Um, but, I mean, the whole issue is that you're putting a sizable structure on a, basically a 20,000 square foot lot, which was really within the S20 zone just slightly over the minimum requirement. So you're, you're trying to put a, a structure in there that uh, is <laughs> definitely more <laughs> substantial than what exists now. And in terms of the neighborhood, what does the, what does the result impact on the neighborhood, especially the, the immediate surrounding homes? And Walnut Street, when it when Walnut Street hits South Street, I mean, it narrows down there. Um, what's that going, curbside-wise, what's that going to get, what's that going to do to the neighborhood? So that's some of the things that right. the board needs to, right. to bring into perspective here, and it's very, very difficult to see that uh, other than with the plans that are presented this evening so far. What's the, what's the actual size of each unit then? Uh, right here. I think they were about, about 1,100 feet. I was going to say on about, yeah. about 2,000 feet a unit, yeah. 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 which is a substantial yeah. single-family home, 2,000 square foot. 1,900. Yeah. Smaller than most capes. I mean, larger than larger most capes. Larger than most capes, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, any further comments? I uh, would open it up to a public hearing now, then. Oh, we're, okay. we're still discussing yeah. just the special permit just, aspect just of it? The, just the special permit okay. in townhouse right now. Correct. Yeah. Right, right okay. now. We're not discussing the variance on the, on the uh, apartment house version of it. The variance we're, we're, in the we're, what, what, Well, what Brad is asking for is any relief he can, the board so deems is necessary. One of the one of the pathways to doing to giving that relief mm -hmm. is through a special permit, right? And not um, looking at specifically the variance aspects of it, right? So is I, that what we is that what we're opening up, or I, we're opening I, up the whole thing? Personally, what I'm looking at right now is the special permit aspect. I okay. don't believe okay he needs a variance to continue the use as an apartment complex. I mean, we've decided that that's a four-unit, it's an apartment complex, and it's grandfathered, 
and he would need a special permit to continue its use. He would need a special permit to demolish the existing structure and to replace it. And I believe that may be it, but I don't believe he requires a variance. Well, um, unless somebody. I don't think the board has. I don't think 48 gives the board jurisdiction to grant them a variance. Right. Yeah. So it, it's. I don't. I don't think. I don't think we have statutory authority to grant him a variance. I think 40A, Section 10, uh, doesn't give that authority to okay. us. So if we're going to invite public comment, it should be only as it relates, unless, unless we want to entertain an argument related no. to a variance right now, I think it would make sense, my opinion. I think so. My opinion yeah. is I think it makes sense to invite comment on the yeah. subject of granting relief to six three six three four we'll, six three we'll eight. See how this progresses because yeah. we have a second part to this request. You might say if he doesn't get this, we're going to then to a subdivide the lot, and he, that would require a variance on the subdivision of the lot. So, right now we're talking just the lot as it is and to replace the existing structure that's on the lot with a four unit townhouse. That's basically what we're asking right now. So I will open it up now to public comment on that uh, aspect of it. Is there anybody from the public who would like to speak? Uh, yes, if you could stand and identify yourself with name and address, please. Okay. My name is Charlene I'm on the Red Historical Commission, and I live at 46 Wakefield Street. Um, one point of clarification I'd like to make is that uh, Mr. Johnson was not the one that completed the project on Pier Street. He began it, but he did not complete it, as uh, Ms. Latham indicated earlier. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to read the letter that I submitted to you for the okay. public. Yep. I hope it applies at this time. Um, yeah, I don't think we had a chance since we just got it tonight. Yes. That nobody has had a chance to read it yet. Yes. Yep. Feel free. I understand that. And I apologize for that. Um, the Reading Historical Commission wishes to bring to your attention that the property identified as 163, 165 South Street is listed on the historical and architectural inventory and is subject to the town's demolition delay bylaw. We also know that the ZBA's purpose in 1.1.I is to preserve the natural conditions and historic sites and to enhance the beauty and amenities. This current multifamily and multi appended property contains an early house built about 1791. Aaron Damon, a member of the Damon family who also owned 178 South Street, built it. In 1880, the house was sold to Jonathan Baldwin and later was succeeded to the Baldwin heirs and George Porter. By 1879, Porter was the sole owner. Several subsequent transfers led to Antonio Dimici's possession in 1922. The present owners have owned the property since 1949. Although the ownership can be readily traced, it is considerably more difficult to determine the various addition, when the various additions to obliterate the 1791 probable salt box structure. The early inheritance customs often divided a house between widow and children. In the 1920s, the Demichis lived there along with a person or couple of a different name. This house still retains the bones of the early structure as identified during the 2000 site visit when alterations and repairs opened walls and ceilings. Writing historical history. Sure. Thank you. Uh, any. Uh, other comments? I heard, saw some hands raised. Back there, gentlemen, I think. Uh, hey, yes? Uh, my, my name's David Walsh. I live at 217 Walnut Street. It's right next door. This will be uh, substantially detrimental on me. Uh, I like that old house. I'm proud to live next to it. I wouldn't want to live next to those townhouses. I wouldn't have bought my house probably if uh, they were there before with the parking lot in the back. But, uh, not what I want to live next to. Thank you. Comments? Yes, sir. Um, hi, I'm David Tuttle, uh, 27 Heather Drive, and a member of the CBDC. 
Oh, I was curious first if the plans were part of the public record. I was unable to find them when I was looking for material online. So um, were the plans provided only to you or were they made available to the public? No, they're provided no. to the board members and they're available to the public down here at the planning office. Okay. That's it. Yeah, no, they're not a made available to the public online, no. Okay. Yeah. Just the public is interested. They get notified and they can come down to the planning office and view the tackets. Okay. Yes. Uh, anybody else? Comments? Yes, ma'am? My name is Joan Benavides. I live at 164 right across the street. And I believe that the neighborhood should remain as a single family neighborhood. Okay, thank you. Uh, anybody else right now? Yes. Yeah, my name is Tom Fox, and I live at uh, 230 Walnut Street, directly in front of the abutter that butts to the main project. Uh, currently, there's a lot of foliage and trees, which helps with the noise situations. We have uh, raised my family. I bought my home over 30 years ago, raised in Reading, lived in that neighborhood, and it substantially has remained the same for the 30 years. Everybody refers to that old structure. I don't think it's a concern as far as that unit. To replace that unit with something as substantial is going to detract from my property values. Uh, it's also a serious concern. Uh, my neighbors across the street have a, a water problem in their backyard, which the, since we don't have topography on this, it's going to seriously, I think, impact regardless of what anybody says about discharging water from the area. So they already have a water problem. I feel that can be transferred across the street to me. I agree with everybody, you know, I've been there 30 years, hasn't changed very much, maybe an addition or something. I think the change of use should be within a variance. Uh, the original intent of, it be, intent of it being a residential single family area it would have been, the structure would have been grandfathered in at that point, so the people back then would not have disturbed the structure or put hardship on the family that was there. That doesn't mean it should continue forward or be replaced or not replicated. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? Yes. Thank you. My name is William Crowley. I'm an attorney here in uh, Reading. Uh, my office is on Haven Street, and I'm here representing Michael and Heather Sirocco, who live at 235 Walnut Street. And their back line is the back line to the uh, subject property. Uh, and just one point before I forget, and I'm apt to if I don't say it now, uh, Heather reminded me that um, they get water in their backyard right now. So if that slope is cut, and, and that is changed uh, to allow for driveways in, et cetera, uh, as much mitigation as they can try to do, there's no assurances that it's not going to get worse. Um, but uh, Michael and Heather had submitted a letter uh, to this board, uh, a letter dated August 1st. Uh, I don't I know. I have a number I, of letters here that I will read and summarize. I probably will and read those into the record here at the end of the. Okay, the, that's that's what I wanted to yes. ask. I, I don't want to take too much time. If this letter has become part of the record, then I will not read it into the record. Yes. But I <laughs> it, it, it will be inserted into the project files. It will become part of the record. And I will uh, go through and note who we got letters from and uh, how they stand on this uh, issue. Okay. So just to summarize the concerns and the uh, information which has come out in this hearing, uh, the chair has aptly pointed out that this is a significant doubling significant uh, change to the structure itself and consequently a significant change to the, to the nature uh, of the neighborhood. Uh, my clients uh, moved there some 19 years ago uh, and their, uh, their reason for moving to that neighborhood was because it was a neighborhood of primarily single family homes on larger lots and that's, that's <coughs> is admittedly as 15, 15,000 square foot lots are right across the street but this will dramatically alter the character of that neighborhood. Uh, they right now uh, look at the back of this building uh, and what is being proposed. Uh, they will have several people sitting on the decks looking over their fence at them. Uh, not a pleasant thought for them to have. 
Uh, it will increase the traffic in the neighborhood. We're looking at changing uh, four small apartments into 1,900 square foot residences. That's, that's a dramatic and a significant change. So respectfully, on behalf of my, my clients, we ask <coughs> that uh, the board uh, deny the uh, applicant's petition. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> yes, Barbara. Hi, my name is Wendy Fox, and I lived at 231 Walnut Street, directly across from the Sirocco family. This is currently the view from my front door. This is the proposed view from my front door. I think that is a huge detriment to the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. My name is David Dugan. I live at 154 South Street, and I've lived there for over 40 years. Uh, every, every house in that area is a single-family house. And I take exception to Mr. Latham when he says that if they own it, you know, if the people own the place, they keep it up good. If you know Mr. Watson and his whole family, they take care of that place the best they can. They, they're out there all the time mowing the lawn and everything like that. So I don't think they're going to do any better job than Mr. Watson and his family. Thank you. Yes, sir. Final notes. Um, Tom Wise, 181 South Street. I have to concur with the neighborhood, essentially. Look, having to look at a condo right down the street from a one-family neighborhood is not good from my perspective. It is a scenic road, as you're well aware that I'm well aware um, from our previous conversations. And this would, although it's not under your purview, would drastically impact that scenic road nature. That, that is there. It is also, as you've already pointed out, huge. It is not does not look like a house. The existing house, while you have ruled and nobody here debated that it was four family or four, you know, apartment, it looks like a single house. This will not look like that. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, if not, I will go ahead. And uh, we received. I believe I counted them up, 11 letters uh, from abutters, and I will not read them verbatim, and I, but I will mention names, and I will try to summarize exactly uh, what was written here. Uh, this is from Anthony and Elizabeth Raymond, 170 South Street. Uh, we are writing to express our objection to cases number 1413 and number 1414. Proposals from Arch Land Development. We believe that neither proposal, to tear down the existing structure and build two single family homes, nor to tear down the existing structure and build four unit condos, are acceptable option, options. Again, that's from Anthony and Elizabeth Raymond. A uh, letter from Peter and Veronica Collins, 171 Pine Ridge Road. Uh, we have just been made aware and are concerned about the proposals of Arch Land Development to tear down, the buildings on, tear down the building on South Street and build either four townhouses or split the lot and build two single family houses. We do not feel that either of these options would be suitable for the neighborhood. The character of our neighborhood would be severely compromised if this is allowed. Again, I'm summarizing these and I'm not reading the whole letter. Uh, Michael and Heather Siraco, uh 235 Walnut Street, Reading, Mass. And uh, I believe we heard their attorney here tonight. But uh, we are the owners of the property that are directly behind 163 South Street. We are very concerned about the proposals of Arch Land Development to tear down the building on South Street and build either four townhouses or to split the lot and build two single family houses. We feel that either proposal will change our neighborhood dramatically and will forever change the character of the area. Uh, this uh, was received, it looks like, in an email uh, to us uh, from David Tuttle, and I believe we heard from Mr. Tuttle tonight. Uh, and I, it's, uh, uh, this looks like a perfect candidate for just say no. I, I, I believe he, he opposes the project, <laughs> so that's about what I'd say. Uh, Robert F. Frederick, 10 Gleason Road. Uh, I have concerns about the proposals for Arch Land Development to tear down the building on South Street 
and to build either a four unit townhouse structure or to split the lot and build two fairly large single family houses. Either proposal will affect our neighborhood dramatically and will forever change the character of this area. I urge the board to deny both proposals submitted by the applicant and please keep in mind that any change allowed by the board can never be undone. Uh, from David and Kelly Walsh, 217 Walnut Street. We live at 217 Walnut Street, which is next door to 163, 167 South Street. Arch Land Development has two proposals in front of you on August 7th. Proposed plot plan number one, case 1414, is a proposal to knock down the existing house and build four attached town units. There are no similar units anywhere in this neighborhood and we feel that this structure would change the character of the neighborhood in a way that is inconsistent with current zoning. We respectfully request that you enforce the bylaws and deny a variance on case 1414. And on proposed plot plan two, which is case 1413, there is a proposal to knock down the existing house and build two single family homes. We believe that there is not adequate room on the lot for two houses in our S20 zoning district and fear that if this lot is allowed to be subdivided, others will follow. We respectfully request that you enforce the zoning bylaws and deny a variance on case 1413. Uh, dear members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, this is from Ian and William Webster. 245 Walnut Street. Uh, we would like to express our concerns about ZBA case 1413 and 1414. As you are aware, these involve a variance from zoning bylaws in the first case to allow for two undersized lots to be allowed on the property at 163, 167 South Street with new single family homes constructed on each. The second case allows a variance to allow the construction of four unit townhouse on the same property. Uh, let's see it. As far as the building of the four unit townhouse is concerned, this does not fit with the character of the neighborhood. Uh, my wife and I, let's see. Uh, we hopefully, uh, let's see, I believe it's basically, uh, I'm all for developers making a profit, but not at the expense of the neighborhood. And we, uh, they basically, uh, they opposed both projects on that. Uh, let's see, this is from Yankson and Paul Duffy. Uh, my wife Yankson and I, Paul Duffy, live adjacent to 140 South Street to the above one for, at 140 South Street, I'm sorry. We have lived here since 1998 and have family members living on Walnut Street continuously since 1960. The petition that was dropped off at our house is missing the third option, single family dwelling. We are in a neighborhood of single family houses. Don't destroy our neighborhood over someone's greed. Frankly, the perception of this whole deal with the petition was dropped off at our house, it stinks. It only gave what they wanted you, it only gave what they wanted you to perceive that there were only two options. The best case for this scenario is a new single family dwelling on the current building, on the current building stand as is. Uh, this was an email received by the town uh, from Frank and Diane Masiglia. Uh, we are writing this letter to oppose the building of a four unit townhouse condo apartments on the site. As that structure looks like an old fashioned as it stands now, the structure looks like an old-fashioned apartment house, starting out as a single-family home with a few add-ons. Uh, with all that said, I think it's in the best interest of the town to take care of abutters and to go with a single-family home on the original footprint. I would like to be recognized as a homeowner against this petition. And uh, this is from uh, Dr. Peter. Nicolades, if I, hopefully I got the pronunciation right. Uh, and the doctor says, I own property near the site of the proposed conversion, 163, 167 South Street. I've seen both conversion proposals and, I'm not cons and both are not consistent with the current character of the area, a single family neighborhood. 
In fact, there were no multiple unit townhouses anywhere in the neighborhood. Any variance that would allow a multiple unit in this parcel that is 20,000 square feet or smaller would inevitably open the area to other such proposals. Uh, I urge the zoning board to deny both proposals. Basically, and the last letter is from a Maureen McClellan, 239 Walnut Street. I am a resident of Walnut Street and about the property at 163 South Street. Very concerned about the proposal of constructing four unit townhouse complex on the existing property and the potential for splitting of the, of the lot for two what appear to be large single family homes. Uh, I understand, I feel the splitting of the lot and the changing of the existing laws which state that houses must have approximately 20,000 square feet of land to build on will be overriding the character of the neighborhood and will open the door for future endless possibilities of continually changing zoning and bylaws. Uh, basically, that's, that was it. So those are the letters. Those letters will go into the file. They will become public record. Uh, any further comments from the public on this? If not, I will close the public. Oh, oops. Bill? Yeah. Mr. Tuttle? Uh, thank you, Dave Tuttle again. Dave, yeah. The, uh, I apologize for not having found the, uh, the plans and looked at them earlier. But the, I bought the house in Heather Drive when the subdivision was created in 1983. And we have a four-family, two-story colonial house that was 1,900 square feet at the time that it was built. Okay. Thank you. I will go ahead and close the public portion of the meeting right now. Uh, is there any further questions, comments from board members? John. Um, more of a comment than anything. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll just address what's in front of us now, which is the four family um, townhouse proposal, which is double the size of what exists now. And that is a proposed plot plan or proposed um, solution, um, number one. There's, there's other solutions out there. Uh, Every time we have somebody come before the board um, with developments or, or solutions to um, um, houses that are falling apart, uh, whatever, um, we're always trying to maximize it. Um, and perhaps the real need in the town of Reading is for smaller structures. We don't have, all have to have four bedroom homes built in the town of Reading. Um, something substantially smaller on that uh, parcel may have a much better chance before this board than um, maximization of what's in front of us right now, which will appear to be a monster to the rest of the neighborhood. And that's why in section 6.3 there is uh, verbiage to the neighborhood and the character of the neighborhood and what you're trying to put into the neighborhood. So if there's a substantial differentiation, the board has the okay to, to say, hey, no, this isn't appropriate or whatever. And I, and I think that had something much smaller come in um, rather than what we have in front of us, it would have had probably less of an impact for the neighborhood uh, to me, it would have made a big difference in, in looking at that as an alternative. Um, even if it went down to a two or a three, um, but not trying to maximize the size, it would have fit into the neighborhood so much easier. And I don't think there would have been the, the uproar that there is that we've read into the record tonight. But why is it that we always have to maximize in the development area? for four bedroom units. We don't need them anymore. And that's why we're going through this redesign or partial redesign, which David is very much involved in, of our zoning bylaws, because things are changing. 
let's look forward. Let's look at a little bit of a vision out there. Uh, that was that was a comment. I, I I just have problems when they come in so drastically different um, mm -hmm. that that would have a major major impact in a neighborhood, and which this is uh, perhaps the pinnacle of what we've seen coming in for development within a neighborhood. And that's, I mean, there are so many other issues here that are that have not been brought up. They probably wouldn't be brought up until they reach CPDC, right? Uh, if the if this board approves it. Um, but I mean, I can I can see a. I can see a major problems. Anyways. Okay. That's all I wanted to say. Has the sorry, we we done. No, I'm done. May I? Yes, sure. you may, David. Yes. Has the applicant. Had, uh, investigated other options with regard to the use of this property that don't require an appearance before the ZBA? Uh, it's not like an interest he's outside just having a discussion with the property owner. Okay. Um, well, do you I, know of any, Brad? Well, yes, we, we've spoken about different scales uh, and, and different issues. There, there's always an economic issue that's, that's uh, involved uh, land costs and so There always I, is. I wonder if we could have a five-year recess. I think it might be. A, I think it might be appropriate at this point. Any other comments from board members on this before we do that? If anybody would like to make a comment on this, yeah, just sure. uh, just express a comment, not yeah. a concern. Okay, uh, we've already acknowledged the fact that this is a grandfather truck. Uh, but I would agree with what's been said around here. This is a much bigger structure than what exists there on that property right now. It'll stand out. It is not residential in appearance. Won't be. It'll be something else, uh, not consistent with what is intended in that S20 district. Uh, uh, there's been topography concerns brought up around here that have not been addressed, uh, which bothers me a little bit. Uh, and then Bob, the chairman, brought up a comment about uh, this section 512, which requires an area square footage of 100,000 square feet, which if you had 100,000 square feet there, man, it would probably fit right in real neat, but it's only 20,000 plus square feet. So it's definitely going to stand out in this area. And uh, uh, it is, to me, substantially more detrimental. Thank you, sir. Uh, I, I think you know where I stand on it. I'm, I'm not going to comment much further on it. I think I tend to go with John that something came in that maybe we're in the uh, footprint area or what's there. Uh, maybe certainly would have been uh, more palatable to the uh, to the residents in the area and to the board. But uh, Brad, you would uh, requesting a five minute recess, or would yes, you like to yes, make sir. any comments right now? Five minute recess? Okay. Yeah. Five minutes. Uh, we'll see you back here then. Yeah. Uh, about uh, quarter off. <laughs> By that clock. <laughs> I'm going to excuse myself for that. Thank you. Hmm. still have minutes to go over, right? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go over the... Um, then we're going to listen to David. <laughs> David has something to say, and then... Uh, and I guess we would... Uh, to oh, which one? David's. Back in the yeah. accessory apartments. And no, they're running out of time. Yeah. Uh, tonight we're not running. What's some estimate? No, no, no. We're not, tonight or something? No, we're not running. Zach's running out of time. Yeah. yeah. Ask, we'll have David kind of. Yeah. We'll, we'll get something in. I, I know because I know they want a, a, we had, a letter uh, from the board. Everybody had something on the accessory apartments bylaw, a draft of that. I guess y that would yes. have been considered the final draft. Yes, you got the new, the latest draft. And 
personally, I, I came down and spoke to Jesse on that myself and gave her some of my comments. Yeah. I don't know if anybody else has or I did. if you want to. I did, I did a month ago. Okay. So, so the first proposal. Yeah. But they seem to want a group. Yeah. Well, that's okay. So Memo. comments have gotten in. Yeah. But David could perhaps prepare it. We'll hear what David has to say too. Yeah. Because he... <clears throat> we'll hear what David has to say. <sighs> Says you have some time sensitive you know, the, uh, decisions mm. that have to come up with. Pardon? Yeah, we're going yeah. to have this workshop. This discussion went any further. Yeah. Would they not require a variance under conforming and forming? Yes, that's they would. That's if that's the case, that's. Changes to the bottom. top and they're not here. When is that coming up? Yeah, it, we need, we're going to have a public way of vision. I would, we would need some type of advisement from town so council. By the, the whole two thing, examples. just these. Right. In this case, yeah. I know that, I know that you want the them to, you know, somebody wants that's them to prepare the way prepare opinion, and that's why I kind of look at it. <laughs> I'm not right. sure anyway. Oh, I think they're all the same. Yeah. Uh, we could do that or. I was just going to maybe handwrite proposed changes. Yes. I think rather than draft a memo. Instead of making it too. I mean, I, I would you think. Know, would, you know how everyone thinks. And what they well, think. I think it would be better to do it as a collaborative effort with me recording the changes to that to that effort <laughs> rather than anything else. Hi, George. It is. We're all getting too old for night meetings. <laughs> no? Depends on how. This is bad. Depends on the job. You're retired. This is fun to you. <laughs> we were just, we were just going, we were just going over that. What happened to the old midnight meetings, uh, huh? This still I, I think we need. Oh, there's some that. Well, what well, I know. I, 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 that's completely I like up to you. I, I, I think we really put it off now. It. Since the last meeting, we yes. didn't have the that's updated the section, so I really think it's important. Nothing new after 10 o'clock. I, I have copies. I'm pointing over here because I brought copies of this. So I think it's, I think, well, I may, yeah, I may not be very popular. Uh, yeah, speak for yourself, Maureen. <laughs> I think it's important. I've been doing this for 13 years. Oh, okay. And these two have been on the board ever since, way before me. Yeah, well, us kids haven't been around that long. Those four day weeks, you know, four day weeks that we have, you know, we have long days. Oh, yeah. Okay. Stop making faces. <laughs> Are you going to tell me how you walked in high school through the snow? And yep, that's what we did. We didn't have buses in those days. I did the same thing. We had no buses. I lived in Somerville. There was only one way to get and to the school. school never got called off either. <laughs> never. We used to never. 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 We used to, some, a couple of my girlfriends that we lived together, we used to call a cab sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad idea. You know, yeah. if it was raining or something. Yeah. Because well, families had one car. And explain the explain why you got this place. Yeah. My mother loved it. Kind of high school. No I got lazy go. during a, uh, a long weekend vacation holiday. Transplant. Looks good. Looks fine. Back then. Do a real <laughs> sizable comb. A sweep over. over. Back a real, over head or a real sizable comb over that. That would definitely destroy my appeal. No, I know. No, uh, I know. I as, as, if I, as if I could do anything in that room. to destroy that appeal. In that room. Any further than I've already destroyed it. I'm not gonna <laughs> By saying that. I'm not going to touch it. Don't say anything. <laughs> right. Time's up. Yeah. No, I, I think it's valuable for us to make sure that we spend some time on those sections tonight, no matter how late we go. Just because we've already put it off. You calling them back in? Bob, 
Seminal year. Absolutely. That was the summer. Well, well, I don't care. That's when all hell was. Time wise. But other well, than I that. Mean, you know, oh my gosh. That was probably the masses. I was just born into that. that. I didn't know anything <laughs> different. You know? my, it's funny. My kids were all this. You know, we talked about yeah. it. Yeah. Hear them talk, you think they were there. You know? oh, oh, yeah. All right. They've got uh, Jimi yeah. Hendrix on their iPod and they think, you know, they're legitimate. Back in order, please. Okay, yes, Mr. Latham. I, I appreciate you giving us a, uh, a recess. Uh, we've heard what you've said. We realize the issue of <coughs> jail, the other, certain issues the neighbors have brought up. We've requested this matter be continued for a month to give us an opportunity to redesign what's being proposed, to meet with the neighbors again, to see if we can't find something that's more palatable to everybody. And so our request is continuous for the end of the day. Uh, both cases. Both cases. That's both cases. Both right. cases. Both cases. Okay. And um, so that would be September fourth or September eighteenth. If you're an engineer, so yeah, uh, yeah. I'm just not going to make yeah. the fourth with the holiday and everything. Right. Right. So the eighteenth. The eighteenth. for uh, Mr. Latham to fill out on both cases, please. And uh, we have a request before the board for a continuation. Uh, do I hear a motion from a board member on that? Side. I'll entertain a motion to uh, accept the petitioner's request via their attorney to continue cases 14-13 and 14-14. Until what was September that? September 18th. September 18th. September 18th. Thank you. Second. Uh, second over here. Any further comment? You can be no. put in for the purpose of. And I think the, the uh, applicant's attorney mentioned that to review. Yeah, we re okay. and resubmit. We go and resubmit. Uh, you if know. You, so if you're going to resubmit, you would resubmit before the night of the hearing, right? Oh yeah. Can we yeah. put a condition that it be any how far how far in it, any any new material be submitted? Any, any new material could be submitted to the town at least seven days prior to the meeting, so that we have a chance to uh, review it. Thank you. All right. So we need uh, we need one for uh, one what? for each. I think Should they I, both be under? Put them on one paper. Put them on one yeah. paper. Just just put both cases since the same applicant and everything. Uh, we're hearing them concurrently. All right, we'll use a special permit for both. Yeah. It's too complicated otherwise. Yeah. Okay, we motion have a, a second. Uh, motion on the table and a second for the comment. If not, uh, those in favor of uh, the motion for continuation to September 18th? All those in favor? Any opposed? No. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We will see you all September 18th. And keep in mind, residents, this will not be advertised again or anything else. It'll be noted on town hall, but this is it in regards to the notice for September 18th. Uh, 7 o'clock, yes. Okay. of the two proposed sections. Oh, you already have? Yeah. They, are they in our packet? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. They were in the desk tonight. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. I will. I'll put it in. <laughs> it only gets into the first file here. That's okay. I'm kind of like... Right. And let me, uh, let me write out the cards here. 
I meant to tell you. I see we've got a case on the 21st. I'll be on vacation now. I'll let you know before I forgot. Okay, the 21st. All right, but um, but Kathleen will be back. Oh, good. Yes, it works well. <laughs> okay, perfect. Was Kathleen on vacation? Hmm? Is she on vacation? This Yes, right now she is, oh. but she'll be at the next case. Oh. I mailed her things out today. Okay. Uh, in case she, Maureen, in case she has to vote, can you make sure she gets a uh, copy of the meeting here so she can view it? Oh, no, no. He, he'll be oh, out this is, next oh, week. this is the 21st he'll be out of August. The 21st. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. I'm, I'm thinking, thinking informed this one. Oh, no. no, no. Okay. Not leaving this one. No. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. Thank you. Continue. Oh, we're asking for 30 days, so I was mm -hmm. assuming that you're asking 30 days. Pardon? Well, he's asking you to defer also the decision. There is no decision. There is no decision. I don't know, no, no. But what you're doing is you're extending the period of time. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. 30 days. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. I see what you're saying, John. to do the minutes next and get those out of the way? We can do that. You know. Okay, we'll keep all that in the file. Very good. Uh, we have some minutes to do. Uh, we can do those next. I know uh, see, these are the minutes of 710, right? Mm -hmm. 14. And, and I only, uh, I only I had got, some comments I only and I forwarded them. From you. And uh, anybody else, if you'd like to review them and uh, if you had any comments, let's see, without prejudice, yeah. Two. Uh, the attorney for the abutter. His name is D E M O U R A. Um, okay. So there's. What page is that? Page on? two. Okay. Middle of the page. There's a couple of, a couple of times throughout the document that he's referred to. Demora, Kenneth Okay, Moore. so it's D E M O U R A. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Two paragraph, three paragraphs down again. His name. I don't know, do you want me to go through it? Yeah, no, don't, you don't have to go through it. I'll okay. go through the whole document. Mm -hmm. Okay. Section e. Those are the only changes that I have. Okay. And I had a number, it looks like my comments have uh, been taken care of, so I'm comfortable with the final, with the change David had. I'm Motion to approve the minutes of July 10, 2014. Second. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. And I think, let's see what else we have on the agenda here is, uh, I guess 
David, we can lead this discussion uh, in regards to the accessory apartment and non-conforming use sections of the zoning bylaw. Uh, I know I received them and looked at them. I had a few comments. And I hope I didn't uh, overstep my bounds, David. But I came. I was downtown, downtown hall here, and I stopped by and talked to Jesse on them and gave her my comments. Excellent. No, that's okay. that's the point of it. Yeah, yeah that's the point of it. I think John says he talked to her too and gave mm -hmm. her some comments. So. Great. Um, Go ahead. Maybe as part of what we're uh, here to discuss tonight, it might simplify matters or build consensus among the members of this board if, as we're going through accessory apartments and non-conforming, um, that maybe you summarize or point out what your thoughts or comments might be. Um, I'll identify for the record that George Katsoufis is here. He's also a member of the Zoning Advisory Committee and uh, a uh, associate member of the CPDC. He agreed to be here today to help facilitate any discussions or assist in any way. I don't know if Mr. Tuttle's coming back, but uh, he's also a member of the ZAC. So mm -hmm. I, think it, it, I think it makes sense for us to go through accessory apartments first. Uh, I would be happy to touch on the, ch the changes that the Zoning Advisory Committee has made. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, if any members of this board see anything else that jumps out at them that they'd like to comment on, now would be the time. I think we're trying to, as the Zoning Advisory Committee is finalizing these sections for publication to eventually be published in the warrant for the subsequent town meeting in November. Um, now's the time to get these into a final format, and I think the comment of this board would be valuable for that. So if I could, uh, in all of our section reviews, we've uh, tried to identify a purpose of each section, so I don't think that anybody on this board would ha take issue necessarily, necessarily with that. I think one of the more sweeping changes that we've made uh, is 43282 regarding restrictions and uh, the process by which a property owner would go through or not have to go through uh, to have a, an accessory apartment allowed. So I think one of the most sweeping changes is if a uh, if a applicant or if a property owner wants to locate a an accessory apartment in their single family structure, if the accessory unit is attached and meet all meets all of the other requirements as set out in the zoning bylaw, they don't have to apply for a special permit for that. They can, uh, as mm -hmm. a matter of right, apply to change the use or or maintain the use as an accessory apartment by right. Uh, detached structure would have to be special permit uh, process. New construction of an attached accessory apartment would also be by right, presuming again it meets all setbacks and controls, dimensional controls. And again, detached units would, uh, detached units would require a special permit. I'd be interested in any of the feedback that the members of the board had related to those. I think ultimately uh, the Zoning Advisory Committee had listened to concerns of those in town uh, who expressed concern regarding the amount and scope of process that they had to go through with uh, what we've termed daytime and nighttime government. Uh, to locate an, an accessory apartment and the Zoning Advisory Committee has put these changes together um, primarily in response to what feedback might be from um, residents in town and other applicants. Mm -hmm. I'm all ears. I was a bit surprised. I don't know how I really get any feedback on it. Detached accessory apartments uh, would now be uh, part of the bylaws or acceptable if they meet certain criteria now in town. This is, let's say, it's going to be put before town meeting anyway to be approved. But I, I was all surprised. Yeah. Approved by right. Town 
call it. Yeah. It, w it was a bit surprising to me when I saw it, but you know, if that's you know, if it's approved and that's what the town wants, it's who we. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> uh, but uh, the figures that are in here, they don't do anything for me. Uh, you mean the drawings? drawings. Yeah. Uh, those are in the process of, uh, those, those were... Taken out of a manual. Those were put in, well, those were plagiarized from uh, somewhere else, and we've made a request of the consultant to update those drawings to right. something a little bit uh, more impressive, I think, than, a, uh, th than what you see there. So those drawings uh, are meant to be illustrative of uh, the type and nature of the accessory apartments that those, that section describes. Uh, we'd also like to make sure that we're not using the term ADU. You see the yeah, you know uh, what I mean. what is accessory right. dwelling unit, accessory where we dwelling. we're calling an accessory apartment. So uh, you know we'd also like to make the term make sure that the terminology ultimately matches up and meshes together so there's no nothing misleading about the diagrams of which are meant to be I, I do helpful. like the idea of uh, pictures though or sketches diagrams whatever you want to call them I think it, it clarifies things uh, the old story and pictures worth a thousand words uh, somebody looks at it you know without question yeah Sai, were you did you have anything to add to that like you were no I mean I uh, yeah pictures are worth a thousand words as long as they Truly convey what's said. What yeah. the requirement is, and supporting yeah. the nature of the requirement that's called out in writing. Okay. Yeah. Frankly, if those drawings weren't there, I'd still get, I'd still get the requirement pretty mm -hmm. clearly. Mm -hmm. So I don't think they're necessary, but that's okay. Yeah. Clarify, simplify. Amplify. I'd say keep it as simple as possible. Um, any other comment from board members? Not on that part. Go ahead, John. For me, anyway. I'm surprised too. I went down and uh, shared with Jesse uh, about uh, four weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I um, thought all about this, David, when I was cruising the Rhine River. <laughs> River. Yeah, I'm couldn't sure get you my did. Mind off of it, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I think, in terms of the pre-existing. Um, the attached pre-existing. Uh, the section B uh, clearly defines that parameters you must have a minimum of 400 square feet. You cannot yep. have more than 750 square feet. I don't have a problem with. I don't think that's changed from the last time. Yeah, no, that's not. Oh yes, it is. Huh? Yes. No, no, no. The numbers haven't. The numbers. The haven't. fact that it's by right. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, pre-existing detached special permit. I have no problem with that proposed change. Um, I do have a problem with new construction with attached uh, by right, and I have a problem with new construction special permit required on a detached. And I'll tell you why. Um, we are a town of single family work residences. All this does is open the door anybody who wants a two-family because where do you, does the accessory apartment become part of a second dwelling unit case right in front of us this evening how did that get to get to that point mm. got to, because you added on you added on you added on a single family became a four family we have other we've had other accessory apartments that are now considered by the, the, uh, the tax property sheets in the assessor's office has two families. They're accessory apartments, but it's listed as two families. Who's going to be the police officer? Who's going to maintain that set of records? Who's going to enforce those records down the line? Um, so I, I'm not suggesting that, I, I don't want more business. Uh, but the problem that I have is that when you open this up by right, by right, by right, and Detached. Everybody who has a detached garage will put a put a. Uh, if it's a single story detached garage, which was um, eight feet wide by eighteen feet long, which was housed the old vehicles, 1980, 1970 character. I'm going to do a detached 
um, I'm going to come in for a detest, or I'm going to tear it down, I'm going to rebuild my right. Uh, in essence, that's what you're asking for. So my, my point is, if the town wants that, so be it. But I think what you're doing is you're opening mm. the floodgates to um, two family, two family um, units and single family residency zones in S15, S20. Um, and I'd say probably in the business A and the business B especially in the business A and the business B. But I'm not part of the ZAC committee. I'm, I, as I said, I, I just, I'm trying to look forward on all this stuff that's going on. What happens down the road? Can you come back and say, oops, we've just had a flurry. Uh, the building inspector has had a flurry. Uh, we've had 50 requests in the last two months by right, if this goes through by right, for uh, pre-existing attached and new construction attached. Because my cape, I can't get my 400 to 750 in my cape, but my lot is enough that I could fit in with the dimensional controls, so I'm going to put on a second. I don't need it, but mm -hmm. I'm going to put it on anyways, because mm -hmm. I'm going to live in the cape, and I'm going to rent the other part out as my accessory apartment. It doesn't say you have to have a family member in there. No. So no. what you're doing is you're adding on a second living unit. So I'll just end it right there. I just, I was surprised to see that that, mm. uh, the ZAC committee is considering that. You are not the only voice oh. of okay. that opinion okay. uh, in town. And uh, the, the, to the extent that I can speak for the Zoning Advisory Committee, uh, we took a look at the master plan and to use your word, you know, use some, some visioning and recognize that as the population ages, there will be an increased need for accessory apartments in the future, even today. If you talk to some of the realtors in town, uh, they have a list as long as your arm of proposed buyers in town who would write you a check in any amount that you want yep. if you could find them a house that has an, in an accessory in-law apartment uh, that they could move an aging relative in as child care who would then sell their house mm. well, the, and move in with the family. Go ahead. The, Go ahead the, there's already something in the existing bylaws that people could take advantage of on a particular case like that. And you're saying realtors, et cetera. And I don't know how often they look at it. And what brought it to mind is I don't know if you've heard this recent uh, to do on this, the. Uh, Summer Street property there, the demolition of that, and a thought came to me, they got a carriage house, and the, the, the carriage house bond bylaw allows you to use that as a second residence on your property as long as the owner is in the, the main structure. No, either. Pardon? Either. Structure. Either one. Okay. He, the he owner has, has to, to live in one Right. The, the owner other. has to live on the property. Right. right. So, I mean, in... Actually, there's quite a few when you walk around. Quite a few of these. Uh, they could barns that right. could be remodeled into mm -hmm. in-law apartments, accessory apartments. Yeah, you know. we've had quite a bit of feedback on that very subject. Really, from the de facto member of the zoning advisory committee, Virginia Adams, from this. Okay, who has provided quite a bit of feedback uh, related to the carriage house aspect of, of additional structures, accessory structures. I totally concur with the fact that <clears throat> we are having a change in the needs of not only Reading but actually across the country. And if you look at what's what's happening, yes, this is this is a this is a need that needs to be addressed. And as I said earlier, um, you know these 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 teardowns, guaranteed all the teardowns of the small capes. If your lot is large enough, 
you will see a two family going up there in the form of a structure plus an accessory. And it will be sold that way. The person doesn't even have to say, I'm building the accessory or an in-law that's mm -hmm. going to be built. But what I, what I would suggest, um, and I'm not on the Zach committee or haven't, haven't tried to be anywhere near that, but Come on down. I'm getting, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I would suggest that you move, instead of jumping in with both feet into the pool, suggest that you move slowly. And I would say, why don't you start off with the first item, pre-existing, attached, by right, why don't you start off with that? Looking forward down the line to, depending upon how that goes, another year, another two years down the road, if that's going well, then add another section of that chart on the restrictions. Make it by right again and see what it see what it does. It's very difficult to go back after you put it in and you've just opened the floodgates with this uh, restriction section on 8.2. 8 well, in my mind. Lest everybody think that we've not oh, I know. done some, I know made that. some effort to restrict this a bit. I, I turn your attention to 43283 on the next page, yeah. uh, I'm sorry, on the final page. Uh, and mm -hmm. that is, if, a, if a, an accessory apartment is granted by, by special permit, it's limited to the original applicant, but can be transferred upon the successful inspection, we'll have to get a typo fix there, of the property which verifies that the original uh, requirements are being met, and that the new owners plan to live there or the principal dwelling. So they already your building inspector said it's not my job. Well, somebody's going to have to. <laughs> but I mean, uh, you're absolutely right. So let's hire another person on the on the town register to take care of the enforcement of some of these things. They have actually. They already have a I position know filled. I know that. To act as a zoning code enforcement officer. I believe that's a part-time position mm -hmm. as we sit here today. 20 hours. Mm -hmm. uh, but has been filled yet, has it? I think it has been filled. Yeah, I think there is. I know there. Glenn has an assistant yeah. down there, so yeah. when he's in town hall here, uh, he's in one day a week. Yep. And when he's out on vacation, holidays, etc., they do have a backup, uh, a part time. He used to be the city of Woburn code enforcement officer. Uh -huh. okay. Well, and and it goes on to say that it can be revoked, and if all conditions are not met within a year of issuance of the special permit goes away. Mm -hmm. So and there, who's going to revoke it? There are some the town. Where's the say that? Uh, will be revoked in accordance with standard enforcement procedures. Okay. So while I agree with you uh, that there may be some members of town meeting and in the public forums that we've uh, already had, there have been some sentiments echoing yours in with a, a bit of a an objection uh, to the by right aspect of it as a lack of control I think if, if I'm putting words in your mouth but as this sits it, it appears to be the version as vetted by the zoning advisory committee uh, the consultant hired by the town their council and maybe even town council that this is an acceptable uh, I don't know for sure that this has been vetted by town council, but certainly the consultant and their council have uh, taken a look at it, and um, uh, this is what, unless there's, I don't think there, are, there will be any drastic changes to this, but I think this is what is going to be codified in the proposed uh, warrant article for mm -hmm. November town meeting. Any thoughts, Eric? I was just thinking that under the current regulations we have a 10 percent cap didn't see any mm. cap here I didn't know if that might be a, a way to mitigate you know what John's suggesting because and I know that we're not you know the, the powers that be on this but you got to think that everyone's going to be doing it. I mean I know I would want to do it I'd like to tear my house down off you know, right. so we'll pay half my mortgage this is great you know but if there was a cap on that and again you have the, the issue that we have currently who keeps track of that like I don't think it's ever come up where we actually have had a number of what's out there. The assistant town manager and 
Jesse, so Gene and Jesse actually did a from the best their using the best of their ability. Every they did sort of a push pin diagram. Mm -hmm. I should have brought it. Of every property in town that had that the town knows about that has two kitchens. That doesn't mean it's an accessory apartment. That could right. be just a home where somebody likes to do their mm -hmm. cooking in the basement, like my old Italian grandmother did. <laughs> but there are quite a few. Uh, I don't think it's risen to the level of 10%, but without going into each one of those properties and knocking on every door, you don't know which of those are accessory apartments, just basement kitchens, or something else altogether. So there really is no way to cap, to enforce that, that cap, um, you know. And there is always that risk that the floodgates will open. Uh, but as part of our process of trying to vet uh, what we think the future of the town uh, might require, might want to see happen, mm -hmm. and it, as part of a simplification of the process for good people in town that want to do something with their property, uh, but that are otherwise prevented from it. <laughs> uh, present company excluded or included. Uh, <clears throat> that's something that that the zoning advisory committee feels is a uh, is an accurate portrayal of, of that. Now, keep in mind, town meeting is an up or down vote. Right. So on all the, goes or nothing on goes? The, on the entire article, which will be the entire, entire zoning bylaw recodification. Mm -hmm. right. Minus so, one article. Minus one article, which is going to be handled at the September town meeting, uh, which is medical marijuana. So there's a, there's a special town meeting at the end of September to handle, at, well, at least as it's designed right now, only to handle uh, the medical marijuana proposed bylaw. There have been some discussions as recent as the other night that we may try to squeeze in a couple of the administrative sections in the rewrite into September that nobody's going to debate over, you know, the preamble and the administrative sections that haven't been changed or certain sections that nobody would object to being removed because they were archaic. Uh, uh, municipal reuse district, I think, was one of them. George, do you remember the other ones? Four, three, and four. I'm sorry, three, four, and three, five. Oh, oh yeah, the watershed district, which is a okay. redundancy of the, uh, the state law, okay, uh, and maybe even overlap with the Act for Protection district. Uh, yeah. So you know, so, but we need to, we're getting the opinion of town council as to whether or not we can split things up and still do what we need to do. George, you have a question or a comment? Ask a question to the board sure. as part of the it's a workshop. I don't see why not. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I value very much what you just said about potential additions to homes that we may begin to um, densify the fabric of buildings, trees, topography. I, I'm very uh, sympathetic to what you said. The question. I have to put in front of you is whether you would like to see the article treat existing buildings with additions to accommodate for a, you know, a legit uh, apartment different than wholesale new construction like tear downs and rebuilds of a totally new construction which accommodates that. Would you like these two cases to be treated differently in article as different cases uh, and I'm asking that because I just witnessed I don't come frequently here but I just witnessed uh, a doubling of an existing footprint granted it is from four units to four units but it's doubling the mass the footprint the mass in an existing neighborhood uh, as part of new construction so I'm thinking if the limit is to extend something like 750 square feet, like worst case scenario for the neighborhood is that you have very small cape or range, very small, about 
11,100 square feet. And by right, you're allowed to extend it in your backyard or wherever, or you know, elongate it, or build 750 square feet of an accessory apartment. So you have something existing, if you add to it by right, attached to it. So that's one case. The other case is to build a whole, a brand new home of, you know, 2,000 plus 750 cape or mansion or whatever you want to call it, which might also be my right. Are these two things different? Yeah, they will be. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that the bigger the bigger issue is that you're right now you're not defining anything that's new construction means adding on to the property as it as it now exists. And what it exists now is um, today. It's tomorrow. It's next year. It's ten years down the road. So as long as you you are in conformity, you're allowing you're going to be allowed to do that. Uh, it, 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 it's not there's no specifications. I mean, right now you could say on a, on a cape if it's on a small lot, um, which a lot of the capes are. Uh, the only place you can do is to go up and back because they they have sufficient frontage, just barely, but they have a little bit of a backyard. Then the other question is, well, how does that fit into um, the 25 percent um, of, of, of the uh, coverage? And did you put in, I don't know, did you put in coverage? Did you put pools, sheds, uh, decks, uh, all the other things in there as addition to the principal structure? Or is the principal structure the only thing you're using for coverage? I don't know. You have to, I mean, if you're going to look at this, you have to look at this in a large enough envelope that you can say, I, I, this is what the town wants. Is this what the town wants? No, you still have to apply for a permit, building permit. Yes. So presumably what we're, I think we're saying is that we think that the counter staff have sufficient knowledge of those issues that you've just discussed to be able to vet those issues at the counter rather than automatically requiring uh, an applicant to, to apply to the ZBA. So we're placing the burden, some of the burden, back on daytime government and taking some, taking some of our business away where we think it might be simpler to do that. And again, this is this is proposed. Uh, all of these are proposals, mm -hmm. candidly, mm -hmm. until they're right. approved by town meeting and then uh, yeah, approved by the attorney general as as required. So, uh, you know, all good feedback. I'm sure it won't be. You won't be the last person. Uh, you weren't the first person who have raised those concerns recently. Uh, but I think uh, the, the Zoning Advisory Committee has put this, and will be putting this forth as change for the, zone, the existing zoning file, yeah. taking those into consideration. Yeah. I think it's I, it's valuable. Well, so valuable yeah, and John has a venue. I mean, personally, if somebody has a personal opinion against not doing it, he doesn't want to voice it. He's on the board or something. You go talk to your town me member me yeah. uh, town, town uh, meeting, meeting members, members yes. and uh, you s that's what they're elected for. They exactly. represent you. They ultimately have the town right. meeting members have to agree with this. Absolutely, along with many other things. Yep that they have to agree with in order for this change and all the others yeah. to be made. Uh, but all, I mean, all good food for thought. Yep. You know, and, 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 you know, admittedly, uh, you know, like I said, John, you weren't the only one to raise those issues as part of this process. Mm -hmm. But if I'm not mistaken, this feedback will go back to our meeting next week. Uh, well, without and, question. And this is not done. So we do have an opportunity to make adjustments. Well, well oh, without, without question. Uh, so, so 
I'm not suggesting that voices heard at this hearing will remain at this hearing. It's my job to take the mm -hmm. feedback that we've received here back to the next meeting of the Zoning Advisory Committee, which is the 13th, if my memory serves, uh, of August, to voice, raise, re-raise issues, uh, point out uh, that other people besides persons on the Zoning Advisory Committee that have raised these issues, other members of the Zoning Board of Appeals have these potential issues as well concerns. And put that to the Zoning Advisory Committee. And if they, you know, we as a, as a, as a body feel that those are valuable uh, and stimulate further changes, then that's the time to do it. This is the time to do it. We're, we're at critical mass right now. So uh, we're, we're bringing this to the ZBA because we think it's critical because this board is going to be the board that enforces these uh, changes in particular, and these are change. These are these are cases that we see more often uh, than others. Well, then I would recommend two changes then, just as one member of the board. Okay. Number one is that on the third, under the restriction, the third area, new construction um, attached. Uh, the by right be taken out. Special, special Board of Appeals. I mean, Special, special Permit Board of Appeals. I, the only reason I'm saying, instead of jumping in with both feet, jump mm. in with yeah. one foot first to see how it goes. And the other, the other is uh, what Eric brought up, uh, and that is um, you have the 10% for the carriage house, but you don't have the 10%. The original 10% back in 82 when that was put in was to subsidize the affordable housing market. Right. Um, the 10% we are at, I don't know, we were close before. Yeah, so I think it's like 8.8%, 8.9%, 9.2% now. Um, not that, I mean, we wouldn't have to go that far to do that, but the 10% may be what you want to put in there for the number of accessory apartments within the town. So add that into the in, I don't know where you would add well, that in. Yeah, they, they considered the, as you say, the affordable housing units. The town keeps a list of what yes, they have. Yes, but you don't. You don't need. You don't need that because the the, the town by all of the building, the, the number of new buildings is not going to increase appreciably. So reaching the uh, reaching that ten percent um, is going to be uh, very easy to do. But you don't want to cut off. I don't think you do. At least Zach doesn't. Uh, doesn't want to cut off uh, accessory apartments. So what you might want to do is to say that the maximum number of accessory apartments in the town might be 10 percent. 10 percent of what? Of the housing units. Oh, okay. Of the housing oh, stuff. Okay. Well, that's so then I think you have to specify. Keep the 10 percent yeah. cap is what you're advocating. A 10 percent Correct. cap of number of housing units. Yes. Accessory apartments would the 10 percent would be on the Total number of accessory apartments uh, compared to that number total number of housing units in the town. So right now, I believe you come from uh, 92. Uh, no, 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 I'm not saying. No, no, no. Not the 10 percent would not relate to the affordable units in the town. It would relate to the number of accessory apartments in the town. Right now, you have virtually nothing. Right. In the town. So, what's the number of housing starts in the town? I saw that number someplace. Um, Low. No, no, no. Housing starts. How many housing oh. units are there in the town? Oh, oh. 9,200. So you would you would you would list that at at 900. 10 percent would be 900 accessory apartment or yeah. 920. 920. So, so you, this <laughs> this would allow you a large flexibility to see how that's going to work. So uh, how do you count it? How do you know which ones are in existence right now? Yeah. The assessor has information about the housing units. How many? How many? But how many of those are accessory apartments? The assessor doesn't. Have. You mean legal? Yeah, legal. Versus well, legal. Well, maybe, I mean, maybe the only ones that are reported are legal. Maybe it doesn't. Right. 
I mean, but how many actually exist in town to enforce that cap? Well, I mean, you, so by, if you have ten percent by, by the right aspect of it, you're allowing those people to, to put it on the put it, put it right on their uh, their uh, going the deed. forward. Going I, forward, I agree. So going forward, what if we're already at twenty percent and we don't know it? Oh, there's sense. no way. <laughs> right? No way. I mean, the, so, but, but I'm just I'm just suggesting. I, I'm I'm just again yeah. just for the purposes of discussion. You know that. There is, there is an opportunity to, to, to reassess, you know, the town's position to reassess, you know, caps. But but once these it, change is difficult, so once these once these changes are in place, it's going to require another process going forward, a larger process going forward. And candidly, all of every every chapter in this document is even though it's codified is a work in progress it's always subject to interpretation based upon the cases that we see interpretation based upon where the town is going interpretation based upon how state law might change yeah um, but once you, so, put the law, once you put the law into effect or the bylaw into effect how you go back and say geez we got too many accessory apartments which are appearing to be two families now how do we re how do we Go back and change that. It was at whatever the number is, and I don't want to allow any more of that. You got to go back to town meeting and say, okay, now we want to reverse it. You can't reverse. You can't put in reverse. So the only thing you can do is proceed at a um, logical rate. And if you want to accelerate it, you can accelerate it. You just can't decelerate it. Well, I mean. Ultimately, if, if it got to the point where there were too many, then what's to stop somebody from going back and saying, okay, no more? That's what I'm saying. Let me see you do that. And any, I don't, and I don't, any, I don't know that it would happen. Line, I think it, it would, would never happen. I'll tell you, it would it never would be happen. a drastic change, admittedly, but we're making many drastic changes to the to this zoning bylaw. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and we think for the better. So, uh, all John, all good feedback, and we need to hear that. Um, and anybody watching or listening to this needs to hear that. Um, and the zoning advisory committee needs to hear that, um, because again, you're you're not alone in that. I just would move path. cautiously, and the ten percent that that Eric, I just modified the ten percent instead of on on um, affordable. affordable units we make 10% for the total units. of accessory apartments 10% 9200 starts i mean 920 90, that gives us yeah, 920 900. accessory apartments to start with i mean that's it, it would take you it would take you a while to do that and if if i am totally wrong on that then we're going to need two additional assistance for the building inspector to go out and modify all the requests that are coming in i don't have to apply for accessory apartment because i already have a i have a, a carriage house that meets those <laughs> standards i will probably never use it but i mean i meet that requirement already Jeez, I, I have a detached garage maybe i'll put an apartment in exactly <laughs> and i have more than eight rooms in my house so i'm already a two-family even though it was built in, in <laughs> What was it, 1890, whatever. But I mean, the average person with um, a reasonable size house, like a cape or whatever, um, I can see, geez, I, I can lower my cost, my mortgage, by putting on an accessory apartment and running it off. Whether I'm doing it for whatever purposes. So, anyways, I'll, I'll just yeah. stop right there. Yeah. Uh, duly noted, I'll bring those suggestions okay. back sure. to the Zoning Advisory Committee when we meet next. Okay. Uh, uh, go ahead, Tom. Yeah. Um, a couple of things I think that may address John a little bit, as well as um, hopefully it'll be different for that if you guys talk about it as well. But one, and I think it came up in town hall, there was this concern, this rental concern, John, that you brought up a lot. Um, and I know other towns have distinguished in-laws versus accessories. 
And that, to me, would address a lot of the rental and two-family concerns. John, you said that a lot, two-family, 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 right? Um, if, and, but that leads to overhead from a town perspective that makes it a little bit more challenging. Um, two is the 10% the I'm also in favor of and I noticed was missing. But let me give you anecdotally what I was told probably 20 times between my first filing and my second filing with you. Just put the stove in later by so many different people. Just put the stove in later, Tom. You know, what's, even, you know what's wrong with that, Tom? You put the stove in later, and you have a fire. And you say it's the insurance company. The insurance company, company yep. Yeah. I need to be made whole again. The insurance I company says, I did not where's your accessory apartment right. certificate? Oh, I don't have one. <laughs> then you're on your own. Yeah. So, I mean, I didn't want to go for it for many reasons. You saw me come back and have the conversation mm -hmm. for many reasons. Yep. But. I'm curious, and just a food for thought for Zach, if we do put that 10% in, how many of those just put the stove in later will come forward and say, okay, now by right, I'm going to make this an accessory apartment when I did not want to go do that before. Um, and that the 920 may be capped pretty quickly. Well, it may be. We, yeah. That's, that's one way to find out. And if, if nothing else, you're saving some people some lot of misery down the road because they weren't legal before, at least they're legal now. This would tell you something about the community also. Have you faced any case like this the last two years, whether they were illegal or not, not registered accessory apartments in your cases? It's the last month, right? It has to be reported, right? We just had one. Mm. You had two. Yeah. You had two in the last m month and a half. Yeah. You're not counting mine, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, uh, the family that got uh, reported on by the tenant. Right, right, down that on. caused the building inspector on Ash, I think. Ash yeah. Street, right, mm -hmm. yeah. That caused the building inspector to go out and find them out, and then the other one escapes me. But, yeah, I mean, we, we get them. We do. We get those applications more than you would think. Okay, David, you've gotten some comments. Good, yo. Some excellent. Feedback. excellent. <laughs> so, no, excellent <laughs> feedback. We need it. Yeah. We need it. Uh, the non-conforming, non obviously, we see that an awful lot. Yeah. Um, I think that the most dramatic changes are uh, 636, 637, and 638, where uh, we're talking about um, the requirements, the additional attempt to clarify or add to the substantially more detrimental analysis by giving some concrete examples or amplifying what that might mean uh, that might give guidance to the board. Also 635, which gives a, a by right uh, yeah, yeah. to non-conforming and, and mm -hmm. single and two-family. That might be a, a sweeping change as well. None of this flies in the um, in the face of existing um, uh, court cases, such as um, I'm trying to think of the names of them. Um, I can't think of the names. Of them. All of these changes are vetted by the consultant and okay. consultants' council. Okay. I don't know if they've been run by town council, mm -hmm. uh, but certainly 
uh, the town has retained a consultant that uh, is reviewing for legal and other sufficiency <coughs> any of the proposed changes that the ZAC is making? Part B, I can see a potential problem. Came up again tonight. Lot cover, I mean, uh, building height. When you say area, you mean height as well? Yeah, this is the, the building height is 35 feet and it's not to the peak of the roof, it's to the, uh, the joist and for the uh, pertaining to the um, what do they call it? Midline. Midline of the joist, yeah. Mm. Which means it could go easily up uh, as it did on West Street to those condos, five apartments, and went up another eight feet. So it's up instead of 35 feet, it's <coughs> 42 feet. But I mean, I, 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 again, but I mean, if, if you're going to, you know, we have a very good building inspector. He's going to be here forever, right? I so. Not if you talk to Glenn. <laughs> but I mean, uh, who's going to come in? And uh, what's that person going to be like? And how are they going to administer some of these bylaws? Not that I'm not trusting a, a daytime government, because I, I am. Uh, we've got a very good staff here. But how do you, when you replace them, can you make sure you get the same quality of people in here? Any other comments from any of the members of the board on this section? Everybody seems to no. think that it's something that this board supports in terms of changing that aspect of non-conforming uses lots and structures. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, George. Yeah, I have a question to the board. Do you feel that the word uh, neighborhood character needs to be uh, amplif uh, supported in what that could mean. We, we say what it is in our master plan. And uh, I'm the guilt person of writing that chapter when, when I was younger. Uh, <laughs> uh, so it is very, if you wish, very, you know, very important, uh, forward looking. This is all the right thing, but of course reality is not exactly as we know it. So the word character, neighborhood character, has it been a term that you need better defined? I think it's, I think it's very difficult to define that term. The, the, uh, the term uh, substantially, that you know, more or less detrimental is another term. What is substantial? Is it well, I, th I think that's put in there, and I, actually I like that. It, it, it gives us some flexibility here. Exactly. It's, it's, it's a much more subjective I aspect agree. of looking at something. Yes. I, 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 I like it, to be so honest right. with you. So yeah. The more, the more. Alone, basically, as is. Yeah, I mean, I think tonight's case was a perfect example of it, mm -hmm. uh, the use of it. And I know, I've said it before, and I'm not always totally supported in what I think might be uh, uh, detrimental to a neighborhood and other certainly uh, members don't think so but that's that's why we have a five member board yeah well we've maintained a substantially more detrimental analysis yeah I think we've tried to amplify it or clarify maybe some yeah. examples uh, well oh, you have it here you? well yeah I mean you know the, the quality or character of a structure is unchanged, you know, mm. adequate parking, conforming to existing zoning requirements. So I mean I think I think we've we've tried to add more criteria that this board can use uh, to take maybe some of the subjectivity away because mm -hmm. what I think might be substantially more detrimental right. is different from what you think Absolutely. might be substantially more detrimental. And maybe we have some guidance on how to p perhaps uh, more uniformly uh, agree, but we don't. We don't have to. It's not a mandate. But perhaps how a, the board might 
more uniformly agree to give applicants a little right. bit more guidance as to what hurdles they might face uh, in making application to the board. Uh, you know, one of the things that I, I really appreciate uh, about um, how we've changed this is 632B, where basically uh, we're making sure that we keep uh, once a, once a non-conforming use is changed to a conforming use, it may not revert to non-conforming. Right. So we want to make sure that we're, we're sending that message to those folks that might want to, applicants that might want to come before this board that there are certain things that we think aren't broken. Because not the, you know, the, the bylaw had worked. Well, well, right. And that's, has that's worked as it exists now. Bylaw, right. For, for 35 years yes. since it was last major recodification. Yeah. Uh, and so where it's not broke, we're not going to mess with it. Right. Or where we don't think it's broke, we're not going to mess with right. it. Right. But there are always changes that, if it can be simplified, if it can be clarified. Clarified. Clarification. If we can offer assistance to an applicant to give them an idea of, you know, or, or even to help the, the, the desk folks and the building inspector as to what type of criteria they need to bump things up to the ZBA for, mm -hmm. uh, we've made those changes. And I think that right. I think that this new and improved, if you will, section um, 6.3 uh, gets us there. Sorry, last question. Sorry. Um, so uh, a topic that we have put aside because it is large to deal with, and it will be a topic for another committee another year perhaps, hopefully engage some of you, would be the importance of historic preservation in some of the neighborhoods. Now that word, historic preservation, can be very technical and very pragmatic, it can have economic impacts, it can have neighborhood impacts. If, if, this, if this chapter, if there was a chapter in the zoning bylaw that somehow in two, one or two years made it through this zoning battle, through town meeting. Would that affect what we call neighborhood character in, in the non-conforming section? Is, is this something that you consider as part of ZBA, the historic context of the neighborhood? Or is it more other criteria? I've never looked it, at this Because it's not <coughs> part of the zoning right. bylaw, it's we haven't had chance necessarily right. to, to pass upon whether or not it's because it's something separate that we typically don't take into consideration. What George is mentioning is that where something might be uh, related to zoning or might be considered related to zoning, the ZAC has identified many areas that we're sort of putting on a, a side list for consideration under a different project down the road if the town decides that they want to attack other peripherally related issues. This is one issue that, that, that George uh, brings up now where uh, do we want to give consideration in a zoning analysis to historic structures as part of uh, an analysis relating to change uh, you know, changes, proposed changes to structures and uses under the zoning bylaw. So I, I think George is right. It's, it's, I think it's, 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 it's a, it's a relevant issue, but not to the zoning bylaw. So uh, that's why we've, we've tabled it for discussion um, at a later time. But if the board has any thoughts about it, I, I no, I think I, I, personally I'm comfortable with the way it's handled now, yep. which is because right. we don't look at it. Things right. that, that are historical preservation in nature go to the historic commission, and we've worked with them and gotten feedback from them before on, pre, on past cases. Not often, but we have asked them for their feedback, and, yeah. um, and sometimes they just like yeah, tonight they've given us they their just, feedback as well, right? Uh, you know, in in connection with our cases. So I think. We work the the, 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 the commissions and, and bodies politic work well together to support each other uh, in that we provide feedback to each other to assist or to, to provide some assistance. 
I think it's really been a valuable effort tonight. I think uh, these are these are sections that we, as a board, uh, face often. I think they will be uh, extremely beneficial uh, to the public at large and to this board's uh, interpretation and business going forward. Should these pass town meeting, or presuming these are the versions that get before town meeting. Uh, I'm going to take the suggestions of this board back to the Zoning Advisory Committee for our August 13th meeting um, and uh, present them to that committee. Uh, and we'll talk, I'm sure we'll talk about it some more uh, because they're, you know, this board is the arbiter of these sections primarily. And so the feedback of this board is, is valuable. Uh, in the changes that we make. A um, couple of other quick issues. I know uh, we're uh, getting ready to uh, go to print on the, uh, the proposed warrant for the uh, uh, September special town meeting, which will only contain, uh, at, as we see it right now, the medical marijuana um, bylaw. So it's basically a it's an up or down vote on that particular article. We either have a bylaw in town regulating where medical marijuana dispensaries can go or we don't. So, uh, and in which case they may be located anywhere without any meaningful regulation. So, uh, the uh, Zach has gotten a draft uh, that we're ready to, I think they're ready to go to press with. I think town council has vetted it and uh, we, I think we even just removed a section as recently as last week that we thought was redundant or, or not necessary. Um, and uh, the next piece is to get the sections ready and organized to get on the warrant that needs to be closed in September for the November town meeting. So we've only got a couple, three more meetings uh, left. The newest draft of the zoning rewrite needs to go before the CPDC as part of the process. They have to vet it and, uh, and review it um, and propose it, I guess, so that it can be included on the warrant. Uh, that's scheduled for, I think it's the 18th. I have to go back and look at my calendar again. I don't have it with me. Um, and so we're getting close to the end. Uh, by the time we're done, we'll have had over 40 public meetings uh, over the past year uh, to discuss that, including this, this is public one of them, yeah. uh, to discuss the proposed changes. And so yeah. we're hopeful that, that the town sees the value in it and town meeting members see the value in it. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, David. Good job, a job well done. Yes, um, and uh, very few people appreciate. I, I until know you're there. Put a lot of time into yeah. it, and yeah, it's, uh, it's very much appreciated here by the board. I'm sure. Uh, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I will accept. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. Meeting adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.